Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. Hope you're having a great day, although there's a good chance you're not because of the lockdown. Um, I'm still roaming around the house and the garden looking for things to keep me busy and draw and paint. So today, uh, well yesterday I took my camera out, I took a picture of these stones that are in a little um, bird bath that we've got in the garden and I thought I'd have a go at them and I'm using Rebel. And I wanted to try the um, airbrushes because I've, I haven't seen one video on the airbrushes used in Rebel. Uh, so I thought, let's uh, just try them out and see what we'll come up with. I've been changing the uh, palette surrounding Rebel a bit. So you can see what I've done. I've got my reference image actually embedded in the uh, toolbar on the left hand side which means it's not taking up any real estate where my actual painting is going to be and I've got a little preview down the bottom because I don't do uh, I very rarely flip the screen to sort of get a different perspective so by having a preview I can look at that and then I can see that from a different view I'm going to begin I'm looking at the airbrush actually because we've got all these soft colors um in this picture uh, another one another photo from uh, my garden uh, during lockdown i'm sort of try, I'm trying to work on um, ideas using photos that i've taken while i'm in lockdown um i don't know how long that's going to last before i get uh, i run out of ideas or i get bored i'm not sure but i thought i'd give the airbrush a go because um you know there's so many videos of rebel using the watercolor because that's what it's um famous for i suppose if famous is the right word but i want to um, I thought I'd try one or two of the other tools and one of them being uh, the airbrush which I thought would be brilliant for this because of all these really soft muted edges and I'm using hot pressed paper now if you ever bought any watercolour paper you'll know hot pressed is uh, doesn't have a lot of texture on it it's a lot smoother. It has got some texture because it's a watercolour paper, but not as much as the uh, what's called knot. And the knot means not hot pressed. Just for those of you that are interested in the uh, traditional stuff there, a little bit of info for you. So I'm just sort of softening in this background and picking out these stones as I'm going. We are, that's that sort of red one there. A little bit of blue in it. What I can do, I, I suppose, can I use it? Really? Yeah, I can sort of get a sharp, a nice sharp edge there, quite easy look. Just using the eraser. This was um, a bird bath we've got, and the stones it actually needs topping up with water, to be honest. And I can put in highlights as well with this look. So that's cool. I can bring the uh, highlights back. A bit of 
bit of yellow going off there. I'm sort of sticking to the colours somewhat to the uh, photograph because I do like them. I think they're working quite well. I don't need to make up um, a palette for it. This is the easy bit, to be honest. You know, the doing the stones, I think that's going to be quite easy. I think I'm, it's going to get tricky. When I start adding the texture. Although there's some nice airbrushes for that as well. I'm just wondering if I could do the old painting with airbrushes. That might be quite funky. Fun to do. A smaller airbrush here for this. If I use the um, smudge or blend, blend, I suppose. Yeah, I can sort of just soften that edge off a bit. That's cool. Hmm. I'm not too convinced about that. Let's, let's crack on. Well, that works quite well. Yeah, that's, that's that's quite nice. That needs to be come over it quite a bit. That's a a long stone. I, was, I got that right. That's better. I must admit, I've the uh, lockdown it hasn't really affected me much at all because I've, I think I've been in lockdown for a long time. I just didn't know it. I'm just sort of carrying on doing my normal thing, except we have been out. Me and Special K, we've been out in the garden. We've done quite a bit of gardening, actually, which was really nice. Um, we want to go out. We don't know if the garden centres are open, though. We've sort of got really excited about what we're doing, and we're thinking, right, well, now we need to go to the garden centre and get some uh, new plants, and we want to um, look at keeping chickens, actually. We thought that might be quite fun. Uh, so... I'm sort of clearing this area and that and I'm just wondering if I'm going to be actually be able to get hold of anything to make a uh, chicken coop with. Um, oh, it's the alt key. To pick a colour, just I'm quite sure. Then pick a dark blue. I'm sort of going in with the darks. I'm just wondering if I'm a bit premature with that. If I should just sort of hang back a bit. And uh, just continue. with the shapes. Oh, 
quite this is I'm quite liking this really. I think it's all right. It's fun to do something uh, a little bit different. Very different from what I normally do actually. There we go. Following the contours of that boulder, you can see. I'm not getting into detail really just yet. It's not where I'm at. I thought it was a good idea to get some colour over all of this because the white is just freaking me out a bit uh, with judging tones. I haven't adjusted the size, well, I've adjusted the size, not the pressure at all on this, uh, not once, so I don't know. I don't know if I should be. Might be a good idea to think about it. There we go. Oh, I'm beginning to get the hang of it now. I'm not done much airbrush work. I used to do a little bit when I was lecturing. And it was part of the syllabus when I was teaching sign making. Or sign painting, which is now a defunct, a defunct uh, trade, really. It's all about um, plastics these days, unfortunately. Go. right let's do something about this big boulder and then if i get that in i can um, draw the other ones around it i think that should come over there a bit more actually maybe just there just dark on the core a bit out there it comes around like that there we 
go. I could have done this in any app, really. Uh, th this would work in Art Rage, I guess. Just as well, if you've got Art Rage and you haven't got this, you and you wanted to have a go. Um, it would work equally as well. I know they've got airbrushes. I'm pretty sure they've got airbrushes in Art Rage. Um, Procreate, if you're on the iPad, you could have a go. Art Studio Pro. All of those apps, um, you could have a go. At this. It's just that I've, because I've only just acquired Rebel, I thought I would do it in Rebel. Just as not worrying about detail too much here just yet. That's going to come. Okay, that's a bit dark blue. I think the secret is to sort of just build it up with lots of layers and then merge it, soften them in. That seems to be working quite well. Like that. It's working, it's working. Like it. Let's get some definition just in there. If I get too sharp an edge, I can then Select the light colour, make my brush bigger, and just feather it back in again. Like that. I kind of want, I'm going to take the pressure down now actually and get a dark colour. A fairly small brush and hopefully I can 
take the pressure right down I can build this up nice and slow keep a softness to it that's it that's that's got it build that up like that look Maybe make the brush a bit bigger when I get a little bit away from the edge. Add a bit more colour. Just keep changing it up all the time, just add a bit of variety. Just sort of soften that up, work that into there. Nice and slow. This is going to be quite time consuming. I think I'm going to... Uh, speed it up a little bit otherwise it's going to be a really long video and just continue look with my smaller brush low pressure just putting in some of these darks Right, I'm just going in now, um, putting in some detail, but it's still not sharp. It's still sort of fo uh, very soft focus, and I'm just sort of scumbling it in. Just checked out my little thumbnail down here, that, and that uh, helps a lot as regards uh, seeing if I'm, I'm getting the tones right and uh, all of the other bits of detail and the shapes as well and the colors so all in all quite useful I'm glad I found that so all done with one airbrush I've not even got into the splatter brushes yet and if you haven't guessed, that's what I'm going to try and um, put some of the sort of gritty, stony detail in with. All drawn on one layer, this. And I can pick up the white, the lighter colour look uh, and sort of paint negative shapes just as easy as I can paint the uh, sharper detail. just want to put a bit of shadow in there I can see and then bring the brush right down
Got some finer detail. You know, I might be able to do all of this with just airbrushes. I think that would be really cool if I could. Yep. Let's get in with that splatter brush. I'm dying to try it. So we've got three different brushes. Well, that's a bit fine, isn't it? Is that? Oh, that's disappointing. Only if I make the pressure bigger gonna get that's not what I wanted at all I thought I was gonna get some nice big splats it's much finer still you know less there are some tiny little it's a bit uniformed as well. I would like to have seen, uh, um, I mean, I've seen airbrushes that do much more severe splattering than this. Who knows, I might, I may go in and um, have a look at making some of my own brushes. So it looks like I'm gonna have to paint these in, these little splatters by hand perhaps. What if I make the brush smaller and try and do it like that? Let's see. So I've actually got a splatter brush, but I'm I'm painting detail with. Oh, that works quite well. So we're still getting a a splatter effect, but so we're losing that sort of smoothness of the airbrush that looks all right yeah i think i'm going to go with that just a few little bit of red marks there's a few I don't know if you can see that too clearly but um on my bigger monitor there are a few red marks on this stone let's put them in a bit so i've got to kind of work that in there like that I just got to get lots of texture on this stone really. I think that's where I need to be. Go. Make it even smaller. Probably make the brush colour a bit darker. Like that.
I was gutted that I didn't get a really good splatter brush. I thought I was just going to be able to go wipe the brush over the thing uh, and it was all going to be done. But not so. Never mind. I hope you're all coping with the lockdown. It's um, when I've made this video, it's day four. No. Uh, Special K decided to shut her, her salon. She got an hairdressing salon last Friday and it's Thursday now. So six days we've been locked down. Um, we've been out to the shops once to stock up with groceries. Uh, and that's all we had a day in the garden. Luckily, the weather is superb at the minute, and uh, that makes a huge difference. And because I've got the studio, you know, there's a danger that you're going to get under each other's feet and drive each other mad. Well, because I've got the studio, I can still come in here and uh, get out of the way, do my own thing. But I'm I'm conscious that uh, Special K is in there. Her daughter's in the house as well, Phoebe. Um, so that that's quite cool uh, for them. So they can sort of hang out together a bit and chill. But I, I'm conscious that, you know, I can't be too selfish and just hide myself away in here all of the time, uh, which is what I normally do. I've got to be a bit more um, social, I suppose, and which is ironic considering we're supposed to be uh, social distancing. But, you know, if you're in the same house, I don't see how you can stay away from each other. Um... We pretty much do everything together, you know, when we're not, um, when I'm not in here. So I, I would think it would be pretty near on impossible for me not to get it if uh, Kerry got it or vice versa. I don't know. I don't know, I'm not an expert, so, you know, I'm not offering advice to anybody or anything like that. I think that would be grossly stupid for me to try and do that. So how's this boulder looking? So how we get in there? I think we are. It looks better on the small image than the larger one, I have to say. I think if I could... Yeah, this is working. What I'm doing now, I'm just sort of following the contours of the stone. Changing the colour. Putting some light bits in. Darker bits. I think we need some oranges, brownie oranges. 
There we go. Yeah, it's really confusing that, the, you know, all the advice and what to do. And uh, we certainly, I mean, we're not being um, silly and going out or anything like that. Other, other than I say, like, we went to the shops once to get the shop in and we won't go out again until we run out. And uh, we sort of definitely only buying what we need we're not sort of um panic buying or anything like that because i think you know the shops have they're going to introduce rationing or well they have done because it's the uh, they've already got notices up saying only two items of this product can be bought and so on so i think the shops will will stay pretty much stock for the time being and i'm quite confident about that so i don't want to be the one that's stopping uh, somebody else getting you know not just the things they need to get by I bet you're all fed up listening to YouTubers talking about the virus. So I will endeavour not to mention it again now. This is this is a fun bit I've been waiting for, putting in these little um, light circles on here. Oh, that's interesting. I may I need to do that, do it like that. Yeah, I'm gonna just undo that. I'm gonna take the pressure down and just try one like that. Do that, and then I'm gonna take the blending brush, take that right down to size. Just blend the middle of that out. That's better. Right, so I'm going to zoom in. And see if I can. I've still got. Right, here we go. There's one there. little one there well that's another way of doing it I suppose where I sort of do that make the brush a bit bigger just sort of partially fill it in that works quite nice then there's another one some of these are really faint. I need to zoom out again now. Oh yeah, that looks that looks all right. Um, bit of bokeh going off there. Maybe just soften the edge of that one off a bit. I've got the blending brush on, so that's cool. There we are, back to me. Spray gun again. A few more. Oh, 
ね。I'm making it up now. I just, I just like that effect. Right, I need to. I just want to put a little bit more detail on it on here. Oh, I need to. We've got the airbrush, put the pressure up a bit. Don't it quite dark. I still don't want it ultra sharp. I want it just a little bit. Maybe I should be doing this with that splatter brush. Yeah, put some lights in. These studies have been really, really fun to be honest. Sort of making a change from just painting trees all the time. Oops. Got the highlight on the top of that. Make that nice and light. Okay, and here too. Still, you know, all the time, even though I'm just sort of making little squiggles, they're following the contours of the stone and if I didn't do that it just wouldn't look right you've, you've got to you've got to keep that shape going there we are Just gonna go in with a little bit of real dark dark And we've got a bit of detail going off on this stone here as well, but because it's in the perimeter of the painting, I don't want to do 
too much. Keep it fairly light. But using this airbrush, the uh, splatter brush, it definitely gives a feeling of detail. That's really nice. Right, I want some more of this sort of bokeh effect. So I'll go back to my uh, spray brush. Just noticed a little bit on there. Oh, I need the pressure right down, actually. It's a bit too strong. There we go. This isn't normally like me. I'm not normally into fiddling like this, but it's a different, different piece to what I normally do. Um, John, I mean that these circles that I put on here have got to follow the contours of the rock as well. The whole of this stone is sort of like this. Got some greens in there as well. Where do I stop? I'm going to stop. <laughs> I'm going to stop there. That's it. Uh, that is my. Uh, testing of airbrushes in Rebel and I have to say uh, very impressed but I would have liked to see much more um, coarse splatter brushes maybe a couple, couple more coarse ones in but all in all uh, Really cool. I liked it a lot. I like the way that I can now um, put my reference image out of the way. I've got my little preview here. And next time, I'm well, maybe not next time, but soon, I'm going to start looking at all the masking tools and one or two of the other um, brushes available. So hopefully you will uh, subscribe if you haven't done so, so you don't miss out on any of that. And I will see you all in the next one. Stay safe, everybody. Bye.